Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Gabby Dawn. Dr. Dawn is a DVM uh, and a postdoctorate research associate with the Swine Medicine and Education Center at Iowa State University. Dr. Dawn, welcome to the podcast. Uh, for anybody who hasn't got the chance to meet you, Gabby, why don't you start with a little introduction? Yeah, thanks for having me on the podcast. My name is Dr. Gabby Dawn. Um, I'm a veterinarian, graduated from ISU Vet School back in 2021, and now I'm currently a postdoc with SMEC, uh, working on my master's and PhD in waterline biology topics, water biosecurity, um, etc. So happy to be on. Water is probably um, the resource in pig production that gets the least amount of attention. And I think your research, Gabby, is uh, elucidating that it should get more attention than what it does. Um, you might talk to us a little bit, Gabby, about, you know, water in general. What specifically are you looking at to see if the water is good or bad for the pig barn? Yeah, so in general, I'm, I'm looking at water from a few components. So water quality, uh, looking at uh, water quality parameters, making sure it's conducive to the pig. And then also looking at water quality parameters in the sense of development of waterline biofilms um, in swine water lines. And so really, um, waterline biofilms can be problematic uh, for the swine industry. And so really, it's, it's kind of on this biosecurity component and then also for antimicrobial resistance. Um, so we're administering antibiotics into the water lines. And so understanding how the organisms that are in those biofilms interact and, and maybe contribute to further antimicrobial resistance is something that really hasn't been studied and, and should be. And, and that's really what my, um, my position here at SMEC is looking into. And so in general, how do water lines uh, develop uh, or water line biofilms develop? Um, there's two options. It's either coming from the water source in general or from the open points that are in the farm. So whether that be a stock bucket or a water medicator, actually the water nipples themselves. So the, you know, the organisms that are in the uh, pig's nose and snout and the environment can actually get seeded um, into the water lines that way. Um, we're not really sure what the source was, whether that was coming from the well um, or, you know, from inside of the farm, but we, we did confirm and find an F18 E. coli uh, with PAA and uh, East 1 toxin genes. So, so a significant finding there. We also have a uh, club seal and ammonia is what we found and a staph hyacus as well as other opportunistic pathogens. Um, so we can find pig pathogens in water lines and we've also found antimicrobial resistance genes and the development of phenotypic resistance. Um, so not only do they have the genes, but they have the um, phenotypic expression of those genes, um, you know, in waterline biofilms. So really important findings, really need to dig into it and characterize this a little bit more. Um, but in general, that's, that's really what we found so far. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the classic like oil and water story, right? That biofilm is by definition an, an, an oily gelatinous type substance and our water medications to get them to dissolve in the water. By definition, they have to be, uh, what's the right word? Hydrophilic, right? Like they have to love dissolving in the water and oil and water just don't mix. So you kind of get these chunky groups of biofilm oils, for lack of a better term, uh, that the the bacteria can live in, they get a little bit of exposure to that antibiotic, right? There's maybe some penetration, enough, unfortunately, to develop antimicrobial resistance, um, but not enough to actually clean them out. Is that a kind of a fair summary? Yeah, no, that's a definitely a fair summary. And I'd even say, you know, some research, you know, they're showing that waterline or just biofilms in general can be resistant to antibiotics up to a thousand times more than just the free living bacteria that we have. So they do behave a little bit different than uh, those free living organisms as well. Is it possible for a producer who has a biofilm to fix that situation? I mean, is it a deal where we just got to burn the barn down because we can't raise pigs there if, it's, if the water lines are contaminated or totally replace the water lines? Or can you treat, fix, clean, whatever the right way to manage it? Can you manage biofilms? We'll put it that way. Yeah, I would definitely say managing biofilms is uh, something that we should strive for. Uh, biofilms are going to grow back pretty quick. Also in our research, we found that even if you use a one-time 
disinfectant that's really strong uh, or a cleaning and disinfectant agent that's really strong, um, it can actually, biofilms can grow back within three days after that disinfection event. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. What would you say to a producer, Gabby, who says, I'm buying what you're selling. Um, I want to know if I have a problem with my water line. Um, you know, they, they all they see is the water lines on the ceiling running through the barn. What do they need to do if they want to evaluate? Would they benefit from some of that management strategy you just mentioned? Yeah. So I think um, what you should do is first uh, need to test water quality, need to understand what are your coliforms at? Because biofilms will shed um, the organisms that are in um, that that space. And so understanding your water quality, what your challenges are, um, that's really the first step. And then also you can do some additional testing, like cutting out water lines and sending in for culture or standard plate counts and trying to quantify what's going on, um, you know, within the biofilms there. But uh, really just if you're having plugged water nipples, if you're having like a lot of mineral buildup in your water nipples, et cetera, you, you might have a, um, a biofilm problem in general. So yeah. that's kind of what I would look for. Yeah. In my experience, any producer that thinks, oh, my water lines are good. They're clean. All we got to go do is uh, turn the water line off, you know, turn a source of water off, turn your ball valve off somewhere remove a nipple and or go to a flush somewhere and then turn that water back on so you don't have any physical restriction in that water line. And typically the goo and nastiness that will come out of the water line from the stick where the pigs are drinking, that will convince people that, ooh, maybe that's not as clean a water as what I thought it was. Yep, yep, exactly. Because um, we, we've been in barns and it's taken, you know, a minute, like 30 seconds, a minute uh in order for all of that debris that's built up in those dead ends uh to really um get removed so that you can see uh clear water again yeah very good thanks gabby i really appreciate you coming on the podcast and sharing that information very useful and very practical for our audience no oh, thanks for having me well, thanks for being on the show. And to our audience, thanks for joining us today for this week's edition of the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at the swinehealthblackbelt.com uh, website. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on our great episodes that come to you every week. For Dr. Gabby Dawn, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com. <laughs>